And this is again, another, this is another famous building in town. Do you know where this is? Winheim's, Winheim's building, very good. Um, uh, Winheim, one of the oldest businesses in town. Um, but again, you can see the trolley tracks are there. And um, what, you know, where else would you put your business but other than on the trolley line? Okay, so when I was 1911, I just did some research on their company. So they, they were, back then, they had 40 plumbers working for them back in the teens, because they were building, Nutley was being built out at that time and getting rid of sanitaries and doing everything. So now, one of the benefits we got also from this construction was Franklin Avenue. We, we noticed how wide it is and how flat it is. That's because we demanded that from the trolley people. We wanted the flat roadway through there. I don't know if our commissioners were that visionary back then, but they, they shook down the developers for a lot of stuff back in those days. So we really got the town developed. We got a nice white street from Kingsland Street all the way down to Center Street, Franklin Avenue, level, wide, and once you go below Center Street, then it gets narrower again because that's where the trolley turned. So we really had uh, a lot of benefits from the trolley, why it was being built, and benefits that we still enjoy today because there were some long-term visions that were done back then. And back when the monopolies were formed, uh, public service was formed, the towns, it was sporting to kind of go against the monopolies. Everybody was trying to turn the monopolies around. They were getting too powerful. They were, we had to buy electric from them for everything. We had to go on their electric streetcar. We had electric on our house. And pe people were starting to get worried about that. Uh, so the commissioners back in those days constantly harped on the trolley company on public service to build new lines that would go other places and keep the fares artificially low. Uh, to go from um, the whole length of the 13 broad line was a nickel. Uh, then there was a two cent transfer fee sometime. And those nickel and two cent fees, they stayed in place for many, many years uh, because the uh, Board of Public Utilities got involved, they started to regulate fares. So there's a lot of regulation against the monopolies, even though um, McCarter was, was involved with the state was a really heavy hitter that's the fellow that ran public service we talked about that he was able to not always overcome all the local opposition and they had to kowtow to a lot of the towns and make sure that they did what they wanted to do but other times they would just show up one day and start laying track in the town the town wouldn't even know they were there they start putting in power poles now we're just kind of focusing on the tracks right now but there's other parts of the system that don't really show in the pictures too well. The overhead wires, the cantonary wires, that carried the electric. So we had to have poles all the way down the route with wires overhead that the trolleys would pick up their power from. And that power is generated in a remote area and then fed through the lines. But those wires were like everywhere. And they were an eyesore to a lot of people. The poles were an eyesore. They blocked the sidewalks. They blocked doors. They blocked their view. So it was really a way uh, back then that for the town to try and beautify the town that they made the, the trolley people do a lot of things. and. Um, I kind of thank them because it was, it was fun to, to read the history of, of how they went after the, the monopolies. So now we're going to go down to, going to, going down to, uh, where are we at here? We're going to Franklin and we're going to make the turn at Center Street. So we've come down Franklin Avenue South now and we've gotten to Center Street and we're going to make a left turn there. So that's the building now we see. This building is the Charlie Daniels building, the old uh, clothing store. And then over here is the health food store and the barber shop. Uh, Nutley Diner, Park Diner's over here. So this is a little bit uh, later. We know it's after 23 because this building has a cornerstone for, cornerstone for 23. Uh, but we're already starting to see some of the car interaction, uh, a turn here going. We can see here, we can see actually cantonaries in here. We can see some of the power poles and the overhead wires you know, for the trolley. And then this is really one of the oldest pictures. Uh, this is actually on the town website. Uh, this is the same building again. This is photoshopped. We've looked at it a thousand times and the angle of the trolley car is not correct for the picture. So we feel that they you did copy and paste back then that we know it as now, but they made postcards up in those days and they, they had scissors and they made up different things. So this, this is a, a particular interesting car though. This is one of the early cars. We see it's public service. 
so we know it's after 1903 and it's an open car and the open cars were, were very popular there was a lot of egos that were involved in public service in the development of the cars and there was many different types of cars from little dinky cars that were very short and they got bigger and bigger as the technology got better the ridership grew and the but they still had trouble with the bigger cars because they had to make turns sometimes in areas. So the bigger the car, the harder it was to, to get into some of the small areas. The open cars were, were quite popular with, with ridership, especially in the summertime. Because now remember, when you're on these cars, it's not what you call a, a Cadillac ride that you're getting here on this. It's a, a, a stinky ride. Uh, first from the, uh, the electric overhead, the oil, the grease, the people on the cars, you know, back in those days, the early 1900s, there weren't deodorants around, people worked in sweatshops, they worked with chemicals, their body odor was bad. It wasn't a pleasant ride uh, if the car was, op was not opened because you didn't have fresh air. So the open cars with their fresh air were very, very popular with people, not only for commuting purposes, but on the weekends, people would just go on there for an excursion, just to go out and cool off, you know, get that 460 air that we used to call it, roll our windows down on the car and drive 60. That's what, you know, they did with the trolley. They just drove it fast and that cooled people off. So, but they were dangerous. You look at the sides there, and uh, you can just fall right off the car. They're pretty easy, but people got on and off. Uh, in the beginning, there were um, two um, motormen on the car. One would be the conductor, one would be the, the operator. And what would happen is that one fellow would collect the fares, the other one would, would keep the car going. And sometimes the cars turned around and went the other way, or sometimes the guy just ran from one end of the car to the other and had a, a stick on the other end to operate it. So there was many, many different styles. Uh, most of them were built down out of the area, but then they were brought to the Plank Street shops down in Newark, which is Ferry Street now. And the cars were um, all made up all for all the different towns. And a lot of egos back then in the engineering department down there, who wanted this type of car, who wanted that type of car, who had a better idea for heat, who had a better idea for locomotion on the car, who had a better idea for the, for the uh, driver. And a lot of it really came into a necessity because in 1923 there was a strike among the conductors. And at that point, all the trolley cars or street cars went to one-man operations. So now you have one guy trying to run this, collect the fares, keep the pole going, watch for people walking in front of him, watch for cars. I, I don't think it was an easy job. I mean, they, they didn't really run at night, but even during the daytime, just people back and forth, you know, crossing between everything. And then this is another one of John's favorite ones. <laughs> I do have my favorites. All right, <clears throat> problem two bringing the trolley down a different way. If you came down Passaic Avenue and turned, you wouldn't have to cross over the Third River, but now you do. This is the Center Street Bridge area. And it's the trolley going over, two tracks. When the trolley lines were coming through in the 1890s, late 1890s, this was a wood, basically one and a half lane bridge. So now you got your second problem. You cannot run a trolley car on a wood bridge. So um, the trolley track faction was given the option of what they're gonna do and the, the decision was to build a much more appropriate bridge. Is that the next one? Okay, this is the bridge today. Okay, there's, that's the bridge that they built, that beautiful brownstone arch bridge. Now it just, it's, did its term, believe me. This bridge was built to carry, very specifically, to carry the trolley line across the river. That bridge survived a hundred, over 120 years of not just trolley cars, but then you had trolleys, you had your regular carts, but then automobiles start coming through, then heavy vehicles, and then trucking companies and dump trucks. It is amazing how well that arch bridge held up and for how many years it held up. And I'm a realist, I understand that things wear out and it was time to change that bridge. Um, and uh, with the help of Dr. Joe here actually, um, this is actually, uh, on, behind that brownstone was a series of bricks done in an arch form. And uh, according to a story that was relayed to him by the contractor taking it down, most of these bricks, the majority of them, were not mortared in. They were dried in, and the pressure of the arch pretty much held them in. Uh, one of the other things uh, Dr. Joe was help, able to get is uh, an actual spike that would spike the, uh, the plate, 
that went onto the rail that got spiked into the uh, railroad tie. But this was a very important major thing to do. They built the bridge, they widened the road, they planned well ahead, and I'm gonna say 120 years is an extremely long time for any structure. Now, when the trolley did come down uh, uh, Center Street in this bridge area, there were some problems. There was a complaint from someone that the trolley rumbling through, because trolleys didn't have perfectly round wheels all the time, uh, made plaster fall down from her ceiling onto her head. So they actually at some point had to put a stop sign near that area, and the trolley had to come to a stop or to a slowdown. Uh, so supposedly, I, I claim shenanigans on that. I've, I know trolleys can shake things up, but I just don't believe uh, uh, that that happened. This is an interesting postcard. Again, I was a postcard collector. That's how I got involved in Nutley history. Um, Center Street looking west. Up until recently, you could see the, the old DiBiase uh, uh, law office building, which is the house there. As of right now, I do not think a single one of these structures exists from this view. Maybe with the exception of down the side street there, one, yeah, maybe the in there, but um, when we were trying to identify this card originally, um, there was a view that did, there was a, a, there's another card that does not have that title up there. People were going nuts. We were all trying to figure out where this could be in Nutley, um, but then we tracked it down and then, uh, so this, this view is totally changed from, uh, from this point on, but this is after you've crossed over the bridge now, uh, you've gotten over Third River, we've got our double set of tracks here, we've got our widened road, but that's the, now the, um, the, the, the other thing that we had to do was build this uh, phenomenal bridge which uh, just was retired recently. Okay, this is a uh, picture that I found recently in an attic in town. As I'm running for Nutley Neighbors magazine, I'm finding some of the uh, senior people that are in town that grew up here have great stories and great scrapbooks. So we're able to get into their attic or into their basement most of the time and get into their pictures. So this is Center and Union. This is uh, it's Ralph's now uh, service station at Center and Union. So I grabbed this one because there's a double trolley track in front of it. So this is probably about 1933 or 34. The station opened right around then and it looks like it's brandy new and there's no cars in the picture anywhere. So uh, we figured that that's from that time period. I wish there were a couple cars because it'd be kind of fun. But at least we have a picture of the station. Tidal was a big uh, oil company back then that went on and got bought up by all different companies. And this is the fellow that ran it. Some of you may know him, Andy Hutch. And he was in the fire department from 1916 to about 1975. He was in there his entire life. Uh, started as a, a young person in his 20s and then rose up through the ranks as a mechanic and became the chief of the department. He's the longer serving fire chief in Nutley. And the reason I just bring him up because just to talk about some of the, the fire things that went on with trolleys, because there was fire issues. As trolleys became more and more popular, the problems also rise with them. So we, we get uh, leaf fires uh, from the electric sparks, we get trash fires on the trolleys, we'd have problems with the wires falling down, they were energized. And, but the trolleys also presented barricades to the fire departments because when we wanted to put ladders up on buildings, the wires were over a lot of times were in the way. We couldn't put the ladder up against the wire, we'd get electrocuted. So that's why a lot of towns were trying to get rid of the trolleys at one point because it stymied development of taller buildings because we had to keep the buildings short um, because we couldn't get ladders up. And then another problem that came up is when we had to get water across the trolley line, had to lay hoses across, and you couldn't stop the trolley. The trolleys had a schedule to meet. So they would have ramps that would they would put down for the trolley to kind of hop up over the hose, or they would have what's called a, uh, a ladder tower or a water tower, and that would be like a boom that would just take the hose up and over the trolley track. And so it was quite a feat in itself, but they had to keep the trolley going, especially you think about it in Newark. You know, if we're running the trolley down there, and they're running 50, 100 trolleys every hour, you're not gonna stop for a fire. You know, they have to you know, come up with solutions to that. So this is looking now Center Street to Washington. We're looking uh, east on, Washington, on Center Street toward Washington. We're getting ready to make our right-hand turn to go south to Belleville. And that's the crossing there. You, you see the buildings that were there. Um, oh, sorry. 
these buildings are all still here because these are modern now. So we go to the next picture, and this is from 1949. This is from my dad's collection, actually. So that's a steam train going across the uh, um, that crossing there. We still actually we actually had crossing gates there at that time. The building in the back, and that's a steam train coming out of like Belleville or out of Newark, you know, coming into Nully. So it's. Uh, it was taken through the windshield. You can see the hood ornament on the car here. It was a 1932 Chandler. They took it through the windshield of the car. It was an opportunist picture. That was before the days of those dash cams. And then now we're on to Washington Avenue. This is uh, Ikea over here. And we're going south on Washington Avenue trying to get to Big Tree. We keep saying Big Tree, we have to clarify that, I guess, because we're kind of using that. Big Tree Garage is the Jersey Transit, Transit Garage where the buses are now on Washington Avenue, right near the Belleville Line. Um, and we're gonna show a whole bunch of pictures of that, but just, we're, it was always known as Big Tree, and those of us that are kind of connected, just keep calling it that, but those who don't know, don't know what that is. So, you wanna do this part? Sure. Okay. So we're talking about Big Tree. I should also mention too, I forgot to mention, you know that when they had to build that bridge, this phenomenal bridge with the brownstone and the, the rocks and then the bricks, and they had to do all the approachments and the easements and widen the road, um, it cost $10,000. Yeah. <laughs> I can't even imagine what that project cost today. All right, so we're, we're coming to Big Tree. We've, we've made it through Nutley. Now we're coming to the Big Tree uh, loop. At this When this map was made, no building, just the loop at Big Tree. Now, I know there's some controversy on this, but I like this map because it shows where the Big Tree was in Belleville. I mean, I've never seen that before in any other map. Now, some people say it wasn't there, but it's on the map, so I have to believe that that was there. Um, uh, that's where you get Big Tree from. That's where the Big Tree was. So across from the public service garage. Um, so at this point, we just have the loop there. Um, another interesting part of this photo is that compressed air station. Um, this is something that actually Dave did research on, was that, that a lot of times um, back in the uh, late 1800s, early 1900s, they were working with compressed air as a possible way of driving different types of vehicles. I just read an article on it last night because I wanted to know a little more about it because I had never heard about this, but they had tried it for uh, certain types of trains, trolleys, uh, uh, bicycles. So. Um, we're assuming that this compressed air station had something to do with the uh, public service wanting to try uh, to experiment with that program, which never, never really worked for any of the things I read about. Um, you just can't compress that much air to drive uh, very large vehicles. Um, but here is the Big Tree Loop in Belleville. So very few tracks. Um, I think this map is 1906. So. Uh, Nothing there, but really just the loop to be able to, to branch off, turn around, or where you could go through because the double set of tracks did go through. Um, now, much later, this is 1934 map. <clears throat> we can see now we have a very large uh, house. That is the, uh, the brick structure that's still there that the buses go through. Look at the track system that they're showing going in. Now, this was you know, trolleys became very, very profitable at one point. It was very profitable. It was a big industry. Um, so when this area was developed, they really went all out. They have this uh, very elongated buildings with areas where they could work on the cars. They could, uh, many of the pictures that are here, will see, you're looking at the cars on that, oh, those outside two tracks there, right next to the, next to the road, I believe. Um, so, the Big Tree Car House was, was grown and developed uh, because of the popularity of the trolleys and how many tracks were coming through. Okay, now this is sometime after 1930 because this is the addition now right here, and this still exists. And if you go to the building, uh, that little plaque up there, I think, believe, has the old public service logo, which is sort of a circle and a triangle and the P and the S in it. Um, but you can see a trolley over there on the left. You can see the old uh, main garage unit there, and then this is the newer, uh, more modern addition. And many of the pictures that we have, I believe, are on sort of on the outside, right side of this building here. And this is the picture today, and as it was pointed out to me, that's a 
device to get snow off of the top of buses so that uh, you do not. So it's funny that how the trolley really defined, and we'll talk about this as we go along too, how the trolley just evolved into this. You know, many of the trolley numbers are the same numbers that the bus routes use. Many of the trolley uh, uh, rail, you know, uh, paths are the ones that the buses use today. Big Tree is still used as a place to service these vehicles. So there was just sort of this transition that we'll discuss that happened uh, coming from the old fashioned trolley to the modern transportation and buses that we use today. Uh, I know this picture. This is uh, that, this is, Again, this has to be pre-23 because there are two men photographed on this vehicle. One would be the driver, one would be the collector, um, and sort of have that cow catcher device, which uh, uh, Dave just spoke with someone recently whose father, was it his father? Or was it him? It was, it was, it was, uh, was actually saved by one of those. Uh, he, he actually got scooped into it, not in Nutley, it was in a different town. Um, but that did work. A lot of the cars didn't have them, but at the time that this particular picture was taken, they did have it on there, and I guess it does work. Um, it's a terrific picture, and it's, it's the, um, the postcard is much clearer. It's called a real photo postcard, so it was taken in real life. Um, I'd love to know who they were. I, I don't know anything about these two gentlemen. Um, but it's very, very, very nice image and, and one that I really wanted to be on the cover of the book because you can see uh, Passaic, Nutley, Belleville, and Newark are, you can make out that that's what's written behind him there. And uh, just very indicative of a time that, uh, a different time. I, I can't explain it any better than that. Just a different time. Just me? Oh. Well, yeah, this is, this is, this is, yeah, this is a double-ended train uh, trolley coming through. Uh, this one actually has Nutley on the board, which when I was looking for photos, uh, I contacted the, I think it's the National Railway Historical Society, and I said, I just want any images of any trolleys that may have come through town. So you'll see a lot of the 13 line, the broad line, the 17 in there. They're not necessarily all from Nutley, and not all the ones have on the board Nutley, but this is nice because um, we're coming out of Big Tree, we have Nutley on the front and on the back. It's a double-ended trolley, very long. I think these were, what, 38 feet, these ones? So 38 feet long. Uh, just a very nice, good, solid Nutley-related uh, image. And there's the public service logo. Okay, just stepping back a little bit in history, a lot of the trolley lines when they were first developed, there was a lot of picnic groves, um, big uh, fields where people would go on the weekends because you only had the one day off on Sunday, so people would go for recreation. And the trolley lines were developed to get people to all those picnic groves and all those fields so that they can lakes and ponds so that they could have some leisure time off. And then a public service comes in and says, hey, let's electrify that area. We'll put in rides and lights and make amusement parks and people will buy even more electric, we'll make more money, people will have to ride our trolley to get there. So this was the uh, Hillside Pleasure Park. This is actually on the Belleville, in, just into Belleville where McDonald's is now and the uh, Motorcycle Mall. Yeah. This is the main entrance there. That's what you see there now. Right, right in here, this area is the main entrance, and then this is the, the trolley coming from Nutley, coming that way, going past there. So a lot of people from Nutley probably didn't take the trolley to go there unless they couldn't walk too far. You would mostly walk to that park, but that park was there up until the late 20s. There's a book over here, my brother's a big amusement park uh, aficionado there, so he's got all kinds of information. But that park, just so you know, the Hillside Pleasure Park was as big as, um, Olympic Park and Palisades Park put together. It was huge. It had lakes, it had racing tracks, it had all kinds of, it's an amazing place um, that was there that you have no clue these days that anything was even there. The last thing I remember was a roller skating rink burned down in the early 60s. That was probably the last vestige of that area. On the park? Okay. 
I'll do the route. I'll do the route. I'll go back. So the so this is actually the route that the uh, 13 Broad ran. So this is in reverse. It starts in Irvington. So people could take this trolley to Olympic Park. It would take them over to the area so they could go from Melly to Olympic Park after the one in Belleville closed. Uh, so it was uh, quite a route though, but look how quick it gets there. You know, it's a pretty quick route, and, uh, and they're running every six minutes. There was no stations. You didn't have to stand around waiting for them to come through. They were constantly running. Uh, so that that was the beauty of, of streetcars, is that they, there was a lot. There was money involved, but it wasn't like huge, like a rail line trying to do it. Okay, another comment on the... Just quick, I, I, I love this little story, too. And this came out recently, within the last six months. Doing research online, looking through uh, articles and things and they talk about Hillside Pleasure Park. And one of the major things, one of the main things they used to do there was this guy who used to do this balloon ascension. He'd get in a hot air balloon, go up, float around, and then land. But many times, many, many times, he ended up in the Passaic River. And actually, actually, one or two guys who also did the same actually drowned in the river. But there's a really crazy, nutly tie-in that I love, and I'm, I'm gonna ask Dr. Joe to look into this to see if this is, I was reading, an old article and it was talking about a new law in Nutley that was going to be passed and it was based on the Hillside Pleasure Park balloon guy and the law was you were not allowed to land your hot air balloon in Nutley unless you were going to a doctor or a church <laughs> So one time, I found another article later where this law was challenged, where the guy went up, he was doing his regular act, he blew over too far, he went into Nutley, landed, the police came to give him the ticket, and he just goes, oh, I'm going to my doctor. 